So, hello fellow Earthlings. This is Earthling 645546-3728. And are girls really just f permanent prepubescent adolescent boys? It sounds ridiculous, it sounds stupid. Who would ever make a YouTube video about this or peace whatever? That's ridiculous, it's stupid. Now, I came across long time ago really small phrase that has stuck with me um, it was I think it's a cartoon by this um, it's a, a white girl who is married to a Korean guy and one of the jokes that she makes in her comic or her comedy blog whatever you call it, was somebody comes into a house and they're talking to a husband and they ask him, they ask the husband, well, who is the adolescent boy in the kitchen over there? And the husband is supposed to say, well, it's my wife. Now, this is the wife's comedy, so she's making fun of herself. But is she really? Or is she just like kind of being kind of it is comedic, but it's kind of brutally honest. If you have prepubescent um, kids and they aren't naked, they have not developed, you know, breasts or, um, you know, a Adam's apple or any of that stuff. Uh, it's really down to how your parents dress you that you're going to know the difference you know I mean there's a woman who voices Bart Simpson and she can do that for the rest of her life and when you hear Bart you're hearing a young boy which is just the same kind of voice that you would hear for a young girl because his voice hasn't broken and um, it doesn't have an Adam's apple, it doesn't have facial hair, it doesn't have uh, pubic hair, indifferentiable, it doesn't have, there's no breast, there's nothing. How do you make any differentiation between these two sexes? Well, because their parents say, you dress like this, you dress like that, you have long hair, so that we can differentiate the two of you, the two genders from a distance. Because I'm suggesting that if you didn't have that differentiation, we wouldn't know what the heck somebody was, what gender they were. And from personal experience, I remember I went out, uh, when I was in university, I went out with a group of people and there was an individual that my friend and I was like, is this a boy? Or is this a girl? I have no idea. She had no idea, and I had no idea. And it was just a, uh, a lesbian girl. But there are boys who uh, do not have facial hair. Um, this individual did not have prominent breasts. Um, and of course, you know, depending on how they carry or what you wear, if it's cold weather or not, you might not even know, especially if the person is, uh, you know, they have a high BMI. If they're a full framed person, you might not know. And one of the things that has struck me in life is that my um, attraction to girls whether I'm with them or not, as often, like, it's gone from 10 to z almost 0 to all over the place, depending on how the girl had her hair. If her hair was out, flowing, visible, you could see it, I never questioned my attraction for a particular girl 
once they tied their hair back, a lot of times I, I felt, what's going on here? Really, what is going on here? And I never voiced that. I never said that to anybody. I told them, hey, you look like a boy. I don't know if I'm attracted to you. But to be real, that hair, and I, I mean, how many times? It doesn't happen all the time because there's not a whole bunch of people out there like that. But there have been jokes where you see somebody from behind, long, flowing hair. Your heart beats a little bit faster because you think, uh, oh my God, this person is fantastic. And then you they turn around and they have a facial hair and it's a guy and you go from oh to ew just your brain twists up into a pretzel and you're like oh or you might see a pair of legs sometimes and you don't know exactly who they're attached to and they're not particularly hairy and then you look up and you're like oh because you thought it was a girl and then it's not a girl and it's like and girls now have to shave and, and remove all traces of hair on their body completely uh, the modern um, thing is to even remove you know pubic hair to the point where you know it's like back to prepubescent times and I think that the reason why there is such a stark difference between what men and women wear makeup the shoes uh, the emphasis on hair products and hair and, and skin and skin cream and lipstick and makeup and uh, pruning of the eyebrow all of that stuff is to differentiate women from men because this is not a situation where okay like a, a peacock or something there's no way another one peacock is gonna confuse another peacock for a peahen that is not gonna happen there's no way that I mean it's possible because I mean it's possible because who knows how that goes but for the most part a lot of different animals have that clear differentiation you know a male is going to be twice as big as a female um, there's going to be a mane there is going to be you know a stark color difference so what what am I saying all of this to say anyway if part of what I'm trying to say is that the whole issue that trans people have to go through is I think it's kind of silly I just like everybody else I've internalized man woman forever and this is no shade to Caitlyn Jenner or any trans individual it is just difficult to overcome a lifetime of training of thought in one particular way I have no intention of hurting anybody's feelings by calling them by their former name to me that's ridiculous somebody changes their name from you know David to let's say Lindsay even if it's not a mixed gendered name somebody changed their name they changed their name that's it's very stupid I think to call somebody by their other name unless you are just trying to mock them and bully them and I have no desire to mock or bully somebody who hasn't done anything to me and even if they have we should have certain lines that we don't cross but in addition to that what I'm saying is that 
and and there's two things and I, maybe I might make another video about this one the whole divide between men and women is one that's very artificial that we've created and really it just comes down to an Adam's apple and breasts for the most part yeah if a woman ties up her face ties up her hair or cuts her hair and her breasts are not prominent she can live in the world of a man and just look like not a not particularly rough man I think a woman can grow just as big muscles as a regular dude you know if she wanted to women uh, you know there's that word choose they choose not to go into difficult um, fields it's not that they're discouraged it's not that they have to jump over hurdle after hurdle after hurdle no they choose to do the thing that society pressures them into doing men choose to do the things that society pressures them into doing it's it's not yeah come on of course it's society pressuring you to do and live a particular way I think women should be in the NBA I think that trans athletes should be allowed to to run I think part of the reason why women don't run as fast as men is because they're not pitted against men I mean there was a time when there was a four minute mile was a barrier and nobody could do it and then suddenly one person did it and a whole bunch of people started doing it and I think that a lot of if a woman beats a man or feels that she could I think she would hold herself back and I think if a man thought that a woman could beat him he would never want to go up against her and be publicly embarrassed in that way um, but anyway I think I'm all over the place but another thing that I wanted to say was that I think that women's appearance which there's no way for them to control it is part of what creates uh, misogyny because if, if we look at it through a different prism and we say for example okay women are Peter Pan women are like prepubescent men who never uh, became adult adults they are like that so of course men uh, and uh, there's no such thing as an alpha male but a man might feel hey there's a woman here there's a someone who's like a prepubescent boy I can control this person because I am older than them look I have facial hair look my voice is deep look I'm hairy and blah 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 and I think that's part of the of the whole thing where women have not been taken seriously in the past I think there is that physical ingredient in our lives that if there was a woman who speak spoke with a deep voice men might have more respect for her for example Elizabeth Holmes she put on a deep voice in order to get the respect of men Margaret Thatcher apparently took voice lessons it hasn't been completely confirmed but she took voice lessons and perhaps modified her appearance um, Angela Merkel do you ever see her in makeup do you ever see her look particularly feminine in order to lead men you can't look like this or present like this prepubescent prince guys even women aren't going to respect you you have to put on a bit you have to act oh in a particular way in order to trigger the cues and the same way that I was talking about seeing somebody with long hair or seeing particular legs or seeing um, 
you know, a girl. There's a, there's a, like, cues. What do you call those things? Subliminal cues that we get, and we don't realize that they're playing on us. And I think that's part of it. It's not fair, but I think that women who want to lead probably have to to do that in this society that we live in. And men who would like to seamlessly flow into um, you know trance, they probably have to avoid going through puberty. I remember there's somebody who came out some time ago and I would have never thought that they were a trans individual because they took hormones to suppress puberty. They never went through any of that. Anyway, I guess it's a big ramble. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. Have a good one. Peace.